As Epictetus once said, if you wish to improve, you must be content to be thought foolish or stupid. And when it comes to doing lightning visual effects, you really have to take this to heart. If there's one thing that you should really take away from this video, it is to not be lazy with your lightning visual effects. As you just saw, the old version of me just slapped some lightning on his fingers, added some glow, called it a day, and it sucks. Um, you know, you really gotta take the time to add detail and craft a beautiful effect. So I'll show you how I do that. So I use HitFilm Pro for my compositing, but you can achieve the exact same effect with an After Effects using advanced lightning and all the techniques I talk about in this video can be applied to After Effects as well. I'm just going to start off with the eyeball effect and I'm going to show you how I got that nice blue glow. First up, you want to track your actor's pupils. If the actor's like moving around heaps, you can't actually uh, get a good track on the eyeball, just um, hand track it. After you've got a nice track on the pupil, add a white plane. Then mask your plane to fit in the actor's eyeball and give it a tiny bit of feather. Now you could just add some blue glow and leave it at that, and that would be fine, but it's not. So I'm going to add a fractal noise. I scaled down the fractal noise a bit, and then I animated the seed over the course of the timeline to give me some nice movement. Now within HitFilm, for my glow effect, I used the Light Sword Ultra, glow only. But you could easily achieve a similar effect just by stacking multiple glows on top of each other. Then just repeat the same process for the other eye. Now it looks pretty cool, but it could be better, so I'm going to add a glow over his entire face. I simply just got a blue plane, masked it around his face, gave it a lot of feather, set it to add, and dropped the opacity a little bit. I then linked that layer to one of the eye tracks. I find that by doing this, it looks like his eyeballs are actually lighting up his entire face, and it just ties together the effects really well. It is time for the lightning. This is Ethan. I just started by tracking his palms by hand, simply just going frame by frame, keyframing a point to his palms. I then added a black plane and added the lightning and electricity effect, setting the blend mode to screen. I parented the start of the lightning to my hand track point and placed the end point off screen to where I would be standing. I added a few more trunks to the lightning and increased its width a bit. I then keyframed the growth of the lightning over a few frames. Next up, I added a demolt effect to clear up the black background, which allows for the glow to only apply itself to the lightning. An angle blur was added to give the lightning a more energetic look and make it feel less CG. For the glow, I used the same technique as with the eyes. I then duplicated the lightning effect for the other hand and made sure to change its seed so it wasn't an identical copy. I finished it off by adding a slight amount of blur, just to take any harsh edges off it. I then duplicated the whole layer a couple times, giving each a larger amount of blur to give the effect of light fall off. I added some lens flares to each palm, making the intensity large at the start and then keyframed it back down smaller. You really can just chuck lens flares into any energy type shot, it will just make it cooler. Next up, I wanted to add a bit of blue flickering to the scene, so I simply added a blue plane, set it to add, added the flicker effect and dropped the opacity. Now we have some nice lighting. Love it. However, I hate it. It's missing this big burst of energy, you know, the intensity. So I added some energy balls to his hands. I got them from Production Crate. I then added a couple of shock waves and used a displacement effect on a grade layer, using the shock waves as the source layer to distort the background video. I got the shock waves from Triune Digital's Infinity Pack. It's looking really good now. But I still hate it. I pre-composed the entire shot and added some camera shake. I also added an extra bit of jitter right when the initial blast happens. But it is still not enough. I then had an idea. An idea that would shake me to my very core and change me as a person. I added a white plane just for a single frame right when the initial impact happens and I made it 61% opacity. And I just find that by doing that, it gives the effect the extra jolt it really needed. Anyway, for this shot I did all the same stuff, however I just added this spark effect from productioncrate.com. And if you're wondering why there was footage of Ethan doing a tricep dip without a shirt on, there is a good reason. I wanted to have a shot where he's floating in the sky. Unfortunately, Ethan is human and he cannot float. So I decided I would film two halves of him. One shot would be him 
acting out his top half bit, pretending he's floating, and one of just his legs dangling. And then I would merge the two together to make one complete floating Ethan. And I had him take his shirt off because when I blend the two takes together, the mask point is right at the bottom of his shirt. So I couldn't have two shirts overlapping. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. 